back in the olden days, if you wanted to find somebody, you'd open up the phone book. If you needed their address, you just open up the phone book, search alphabetically, and there it is. Or if you needed to find somebody in another city, remember what you would do? You'd get your library card and walk down to the local library and you'd search through the stacks for the phone book of that city and you would search through. It wasn't the most convenient way to find someone, but the system worked. Now, here's the thing. If back in the olden days, if you didn't want to be found, what are some things that you could do? Well, here's one that I think most school teachers did with the phone book. You would have an unlisted phone number, right? So that those kids couldn't phone you at you know, 10 o'clock at night asking for help with their algebra homework. Or, you know, if, if you were maybe wealthy, that was one of the luxuries, you, you'd pay for that unlisted phone number. And that way, people couldn't find you. Now, there, there are more extreme ways back in the day to make sure that you couldn't be found. You could, you could become a recluse. And, and that was something that maybe if you were eccentric and, and you had enough money, you could just fortress yourself off into your home, pay people to go out and get your groceries, and, and you could live your undiscovered life by others. There's another way, a more radical way, to make sure that no one found you, and it was to go into the witness protection program, and you would get all new ID, you would, you'd be given a new name, a new story background, a new place to live, uh, so that the, I don't know, so the mob couldn't find you. Uh, but here's the thing, even, even in the witness protection program, you still, you were getting a new identity so you could safely go out into the world still, get your groceries, interact, have a life. Because at the end of the day, being completely cut off from the world isn't really desirable for 99.99% of the population. In the end, being found, it's something, something beautiful. It's something that we can all seek to have happen in our lives. The idea of going completely off the grid, it, I, th I think it's always been the case. There have always been people who lived on the frontier, were rugged individuals that could take care of themselves. Around, you know, after Y2K, you, you got to see a number of movies that would, would talk about sort of the paranoid person wanting to live off the grid because their you know, storyline would go that uh, with the internet and all of our connectivity, the government is watching us and you know, they're tracking all of our communications and so you'd have storylines of people building these firewalled homes and by firewalled I mean nothing from the internet could get in or get, get out so that I don't know, the Russian double agents couldn't find them and murder them. Uh, but going off the grid, uh, today it's more of a sort of an eco practice. Some people wanting to see if they can leave a, a zero carbon footprint. But oftentimes it's, it's that person who's very self sufficient, who knows how to take care of themselves, uh, the individual who doesn't rely on all of the mechanisms of society and its consumerism. They know how to fish, they know how to hunt, they know how to take care of themselves. This is Ken Smith. And Ken Smith, you could call him a recluse, and for decades he lived off the grid. 
Uh, his story is that when he was a just a young adult, I'm sorry, he was a teenager, uh, he got mugged and beaten up while just walking about uh, in his home in uh, the UK. And that left him with a concussion and in hospital unconscious for the better part of a month. And, and when he came to, he, he wanted to see what it would be like to go somewhere without people. And so he traveled uh, to Canada, you know, walked through uh, the, the um, Northern Territories, and he discovered that he could live on his own for as long as he tested it. So when he went back home, he, he went for a long, long walk, and he found himself going through the Scottish Highlands, if you can recognize from the map there, and he was looking out over a lock, and he realized, I think I could build a cabin there and live alone, on my own, without having to interact until necessary with humanity. And that's what he did. I, I, I always admire the ability of people to, to live this way, to, to take care of themselves, to, to be that, um, that individual. Um, as much as I, I would prefer to live in society and in, in a community. Um, there, someone did a documentary on Ken Smith and, and tracing his life, and uh, he eventually had a stroke and had to go into hospital and, and live more connected with the world. But that's how much energy it takes to not be found. To avoid being found by others, you need to completely turn your life upside down. It's not done casually. It takes energy every day to make sure that you are not found. We learn from Jesus that not being found creates a kind of a fun search for God that God delights in finding people who the rest of the world has difficulty finding. Now, I'm not talking about geographically. I'm talking socially and morally. The folk who have been outcast in our society. In Jesus' time, uh, it refers in this passage to the sinners and the, the tax collectors, the people who had contracts with occupying Rome to collect toll uh, taxes and you know, abuse the system. They were despised and they were considered persona non grata. But when someone like that wants to turn their life around, they don't have any entry point into community. And Jesus tells some parables about how, as far as God's concerned, finding those people is a joy. It is a delight. God delights in finding not just people who are on the outsides of society. God delights in finding you. God delights in finding you. God delights in finding you. But we can put up a pretty good struggle when it comes to not being found. Here's what's happening in the scripture passage. You have these righteous, upstanding people who are you know, scrunching their face at Jesus saying, why are you eating with these sinners? And Jesus tells a couple parables that basically teaches, you good people don't need God to find you, you're already found. In fact, you're so good at your righteousness, it seems as though you don't even need God's help. And so be it. But there are people in this world who do need God's help. And let me teach you something about God, Jesus is saying in these stories. 
our God.